Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Formed in Faith. I'm still Regis O'Neill. I'm still Father Romans. And Father, we're here next to uh, the Lord's place, yes. right? The tabernacle. This is where he is present to us in the Eucharist. That's right. That's right. One of the holiest places that we could ever film for Formed in Faith. And we're doing so because we received a comment, Father, a couple of weeks ago that had me chuckling. <laughs> someone, someone asked what the upside down pool table is hanging above the altar. <laughs> so we're gonna cut in some footage. You can look at it right now. So this, yes, I, I, I could see why some people might say that it looks like an upside down pool table, but after we stopped chuckling over that comment, Father, we decided, well, you know, maybe we should do a Formed in Faith episode about some of the symbolism that we have around our altar. This quote unquote upside down pool table is called a baldachin or a baldachino. Father, what the heck is a baldachin? Well, Regis, a baldachin is a piece of cloth or a canopy that covers over the altar area mm. because it denotes power and authority. Mm. And there's no other place where more power and authority resides than where God himself becomes present to us in the universe. That's true. Every day. Every day. Day. Every single day. So how multiple times. Multiple times. That's right. Most days yes. <laughs> it's multiple times. Yes. How fitting it is that we should have this symbol of power and authority over our altar where this miracle happens. Yes, and you see these in uh, mostly in cathedrals mm -hmm. primarily, mm -hmm. uh, where they're very ornate. Mm -hmm. And one comes to think of St. Peter's Basilica, sure, of course. Of course. Yes. Uh, the Mother Church of uh, all of us, mm -hmm. where, where the Holy Father. Uh, celebrates the Eucharist, mm -hmm. and that baldachino, mm -hmm. as they call it there, uh, is over the main altar, mm -hmm. but it also happens to be over the tomb of St. Peter. That's right. Because... And that was put there in the 1600s. Do you know by who? Uh, was that Pope Urban VIII, Father? It was indeed. Oh, that's right. It's just Catholic trivia just flowing off the tongue today. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> It's nice when it works. <laughs> it's, it's, I was going to say, it's nice when we don't have to do a cut because I flubbed something. <laughs> yes, Pope Urban VIII put the Baldacchino, a St. Peter's Baldacchin, in place in St. Peter's Basilica, and it's still there to this day. Well, the Baldacchin is not the only symbol that we have here in this sanctuary. That's right. We have the six symbols around the crucifix, denoting various aspects of the passion and death of Jesus. These six symbols, actually, we receive a lot of questions about. And thankfully... Father O'Neill, our own Who's Father O'Neill, my cousin, <laughs> when he was stationed here as parochial vicar, did a little research on these symbols. And we're happy to share with you today uh, the results of that and what those symbols actually represent. So we'll start in the top left, Father. Their we, left or our left? Uh, oh gosh, their left. Their left. Their left. Whew, okay. Got me there. <laughs> uh, okay, your top left. We have the crown of thorns ringed around three nails and the inscription I-N-R-I. -I. This, of course, is symbolic. Test your Latin here. I know, I know. This is, oh, I'm, it's coming. This, of course, is symbolic of Jesus' time spent on the cross. He wore the crown of thorns. He was nailed to the cross with three nails, one in each hand and one through both of his feet. And he had that inscription placed above him, I-N-R-I, -I, which stands for Jesus Nazarenus Rex Eudorum? Eudorum? Close. <laughs> it's, it's botched Latin for Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. That is the inscription that Pontius Pilate nailed above his head. So that's the top left. Father, what's that top right image up there? Top right is a rooster. Mm, rooster. And the rooster in scripture would be, do you remember, when Peter denied the Lord, what's the cock crowed three, three, times. three times. That's right. Yeah. So it's a symbol to us of mm. Peter's denial of the Lord mm. and our own, in fact, each right. time we sin. Absolutely. It, which is a lot more frequent than any of us would like. Right. So that brings that humility mm -hmm. of the knowledge that we deny Christ. Right. All right. That's top left, top right. Next, we move to middle left and we have a cross over a chalice. And this, of course, is symbolic of the fact that the blood that Jesus shed for us on the cross is the means of our salvation and it is intrinsically connected to the Eucharist because Jesus not only pours forth his blood for us on the cross, but also he gives us his blood as spiritual nourishment once again in the Eucharist every day. Now, right here, that's right. <laughs> 
right next to me. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and we go to the middle right where we have a basin and jug, which is symbolic of Pontius Pilate. That's right. Who, before handing over Jesus to be crucified, declared, I am innocent of this man's blood. And he washed his hands right. with water, just like that. Also reminiscent of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples at the Last Supper, which we will commemorate on Holy Thursday. Right down Stay there. Stay tuned. Mm, that's right. <laughs> All right, two left to go. On the bottom left, we have two scourges and a pillar. Now, this helps us to remember, Father, that you know we think of the crucifixion, excuse me, the crucifixion, as this pouring out of love by Jesus. But of course, we also know that he suffered greatly even before his time on the cross. And this helped us to remember his time being whipped, scourged at the pillar as Pontius Pilate ordered him to be whipped in a hope to appease the Jews without actually having to crucify him. And in the lower right, we have a lantern. Mm. Symbolic of how Judas and the temple guards went into the garden of Gethsemane in the middle of night to take Jesus. That's right. Such a such a underhanded way mm. to take the Lord. And he even said himself, I've been teaching in the temple every day, and yet you have come in the dead of night. Why have you done this? Right. Just kind of helping and you, them. He had to know that of Judas course. would be doing this because he said at the Last Supper, one of you will betray me. That's right. That's right. And, and he knew. And he, of course, of course. he knew. He's God. He's God. Of course he knew. <laughs> so these symbols uh, that we have all around the crucifix here in our sanctuary all relate to the passion and death of Jesus. And how yes. fitting it is that we're doing this episode during Lent. Right. Ugh. You know, and it all ties in with the baldachin mm. above the altar, de denoting the power and authority of mm -hmm. who becomes present on this altar. Right. Well, it's by the means of his death and the glory of his resurrection that we have our faith. There is no better time to meditate on and consider the passion and death of our Lord than during this Lenten season, this season of self-sacrifice, of death to self, and of penitence. So we hope that when you're sitting out in the pews over the next few weeks, that you'll take special notice of our baldachin above the altar and of these six symbols around the crucifix and that they will help you to meditate upon the passion of our Lord. And I hope I don't hear the term pool t upside down pool table. No, no more. <laughs> Put <laughs> that, that one go rest. out of your vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Until next week's edition of Formed in Faith, I'm Father Romans. I'm Regis O'Neill. And we're asking God's choices, blessings upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. Amen.